It may seem there's nothing exciting about human bones, unless you find them in your closet. But normally, they're hidden under multiple layers of cells and tissues. They're dense, hard, and unassuming. But are they? Your bones not only protect your internal organs and help you move, but also store fat and minerals. Your blood cells are produced there. Most of the bone tissue isn't even solid. How about going on a journey through your bones to see it with your own eyes? But you'll need to get through several layers of other tissues first. To start with, you'll have to squeeze through the skin, your largest organ. Be careful! It's a labyrinth of hair follicles, sweat glands, nerve endings, and blood vessels where you can easily get lost. Right under the skin, there's a layer of fat. Its main purpose is to keep your body warm. This layer consists of tiny, plastic bags, each with a drop of fat, and you may have a tough time navigating around these bubbles. After passing this obstacle course, you're inside your muscles. Their cells, fibrous and long, are always ready to spring into action, helping you transport your body wherever you need. Moving through this layer of tissue is tricky, because such cells form bundles, and that's what makes your muscles so strong. Imagine taking a bunch of rubber bands and stretching them. Hard? Your muscle tissue's tough like that. Finally, you reach your destination and see a thin, dense membrane. It's the outer surface of a bone. This layer consists mostly of connective tissue made up of proteins. You also spot numerous blood vessels. Their tiny perpendicular branches sneak deeper into the bone to feed bone cells. You notice that these branches lie in minuscule channels. The inside of the surface layer is filled with stem cells. They're the busiest in childhood and become less active when a person grows up. But if a bone is damaged, they jump back into action and get down to repairing it. Luckily, all your bones are intact. But if there was a fracture, you'd see nearby vessels bleeding and forming a thick lump around the injury. In about two days, the area would be surrounded by countless bone-producing cells. They would begin to change, turning into different kinds of cells and forming new bone between the ends of the fractured one. Anyway, it's time to move further toward your bone's hardest part, the outer layer, which is smooth and solid. Because of its density, it's also called compact bone. This kind of bone is the reason why x-rays, which can normally pass through nearly anything, including your body's soft tissues, can hardly get through your bones. This part makes up 80% of your total bone mass. It's incredibly hard to squeeze through the compact bone because it consists of numerous microscopic columns. Inside these cylinders, there are even more bone-producing cells. And in the middle, there's a central canal that connects the bone's nerve fibers and blood vessels. The cylinders go along the bone and help to prevent it from bending or fracturing. Once you get through this super hard layer, the picture around changes dramatically. You're in spongy bone, boing boing. True to its name, it looks like a sponge or a honeycomb that consists of tiny needles. This bone tissue is way less dense than the compact bone, more flexible, and also much lighter. You notice that the spongy tissue is only near the ends of the bone you're exploring. It means you're inside one of the long bones, whose structure is a bit different from others. In the middle, it has what looks like a tunnel to you. It's made of compact bone that surrounds a cavity filled with a special substance. It's called yellow bone marrow, and it's rich in fat. But it's time to return to the spongy bone. It's mostly found at the ends of long bones, inside vertebrae, and near joints. The sponge-like tissue has open spaces in it. They're filled with red bone marrow, which produces blood cells. While traveling further through the human skeleton, you discover that it consists of five types of bones. Long. They're much longer than they are wide. For example, your thigh or upper arm bones and your toes and fingers. Flat. They're thin and slightly curved. These bones are like a layered cake, spongy bone sandwiched between two parallel layers of compact bone. Your ribs and most of the bones in your skull are flat bones. Short bones, shaped like cubes, they consist of a thin layer of compact bone around spongy insides. Short bones can be found in your wrists and ankles. Sesamoid. These are bones surrounded by tendons, and their main purpose is to hold tendons away from joints. There are numerous bones in your feet, hands, and knees, including the kneecap. 
These bones got such a name because they look like grains of wheat. Irregular bones. These don't fit into any category because their shape is too complicated. Those are most of the bones of your face and some of your skull. An adult skeleton is made up of 206 bones, and each of them has its own function. Interestingly, people are born with nearly twice as many bones. But as you grow up, these small bones fuse together and form larger ones as a person matures. If one bone's broken, those around it can't work properly either. It usually takes about 12 weeks for a bone to heal. The smallest bone in your body is dozens of times smaller than a penny. This bone's called the stapes and is located in your middle ear. The tiny thing weighs as much as two sesame seeds. You get a new skeleton every 10 years, because every year, 10% of your bone's mineral content gets renewed. The average person walks 1 to 3 million steps per year. That's why bones have to be so resilient, otherwise they wouldn't cope with the pressure. Your longest and strongest bone is in your leg. The femur, that's how it's called, runs from your hip to your knee. Even though your teeth are part of the skeletal system, they don't count as bones. More than half of all the bones in your body are in your hands and feet. The only bone in your body that's not connected to another is the tongue bone. It's a V-shaped bone at the base of your tongue that holds it in place. 1% of people are born with a 13th rib. Your bones aren't white. Their color is rather yellow or pinkish from the outside and deep red inside. That's because of the blood vessels in and around them. If you fracture a bone, ow! It'll heal on its own by producing new bone cells. A cast will only help it heal straight. People have known how to deal with broken bones for ages. In ancient Egypt, around 1600 years BCE, they realigned fractured bones and bandaged them with linen. Now, you can't control your bones. You can only tell your muscles attached to your bones where to move. Your bones reach their maximum density at the age of 30. Only 10% of the world's animals, including humans, are vertebrates, meaning they have a skeletal system. A coating of special tissue called cartilage covers a bone and prevents it from rubbing directly against another one. The enamel covering your teeth is even stronger than your bones. It protects the delicate tissue and nerves underneath. The biggest joint in your body is actually your knee. It has to be large to connect three equally big bones. The femur, going from your hip to your knee, the kneecap, and the shin bone. Some joints hardly move or don't move whatsoever. Those are between your teeth, inside the skull, and between the first pair of ribs. Bones store minerals, for example, calcium and phosphate. They can be released in your bloodstream when necessary. And finally, the so-called funny bone isn't a bone at all. It's a nerve that runs inside your elbow. When you hit it, you feel sharp, piercing pain. The upper arm bone the nerve runs by is called the humerus. But the pain is clearly not humerus. It can be funny when it happens to someone else, though. Check out that buff dude over there with the orange skin. He's been chilling on Mars for a hot minute, which is why he looks like he used the wrong shade of self-tan. You see, all those carotenoids and carrots, sweet potatoes, bell peppers, tomatoes, and pumpkins are protecting him from those UV rays. The more he eats, the more orange he gets. And as for his sturdiness, it's all about that Martian gravity. The gravity here makes us perceive our weight differently. And if you want to be a boss on Mars, you gotta eat heavily. Like. If a person weighs 150 pounds on Earth, it feels like no more than 55 pounds on Mars. So, overeating can help shorten that gravity-to-weight gap. Mercury is a whole different thing. It's hotter than Georgia asphalt during the day, but colder than Elsa's castle at night. You gotta be made of metal with a high melting point to be able to survive here. But for us regular humans, we'd be toast. Literally. Even though Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, Venus is still the hottest one. Life on Venus more like life on the sun's evil twin. 
The temperature here typically hovers around 870 degrees Fahrenheit on average. Surviving at the boiling point of water, or in the extreme heat of Venus, is a challenge for most earthly species. Only a select few can endure boiling hot temperatures. Others rush to Starbucks to grab an iced latte with the first beams of the spring sun. So no human being can really evolve enough to survive on Venus. The only creatures that could thrive there are probably tardigrades and those weirdos who put hot sauce on everything. You wonder what tardigrades are? Well, those are minuscule and adorable caterpillar-like creatures that possess remarkable durability. They can endure boiling water, the depths of a sea trench, and the frigid, lightless void of space. Recently, tardigrades were included in a scientific study aboard a spacecraft that unfortunately crashed on the moon. Scientists speculate that the tardigrades may have survived the impact. Hey, would you like to turn into this creature and live on Venus? We're done with terrestrial planets. Let's move on to gas giants. Now look at this dude from Saturn. He's got flippers and not arms. He's got small holes with no external ear flaps instead of regular ears. Most of this gas giant is colder than your ex's heart, as the temperature is about minus 220F. You can't walk on it, but you can turn into a snowball or an ice crystal if you're feeling frisky. Things are quite similar on Jupiter, so probably turning into a seal and chilling there is not that bad of an idea. At least you can live there rent-free. And don't even get me started on Neptune and Uranus. These guys are ice giants with no solid surface, so those sharp-clawed dudes you see in movies? Yeah, they don't exist. Plus, these two ain't exactly hospitable to life. I'll stick to my sweet potatoes on Mars. Thank you very much. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. So Barry is running along the shore of a lake as fast as possible. He knows that if he stops, his life will turn into a nightmare in no time. A thousand mosquitoes are about to bite him. But what he doesn't know is that he'll be okay after all. So don't be afraid, Barry, and stop. Mosquitoes are slow. They fly at a little more than one mile per hour. <laughs> and you can't run forever. So after a couple of hours of pointless running, Barry stops. He sweats and emits a smell attractive to insects. One little mosquito flies up to him. It buzzes next to his ear, sits on his sweaty neck, and bites. The insect pierces the skin with a special mouth apparatus called a proboscis. The mosquito starts pumping blood through this needle. Its saliva gets into Barry's body and causes an allergic reaction. More precisely, it's Barry's immune system that starts this reaction. It perceives the mosquito's saliva as an enemy and sends a unique chemical substance to the bite site. The fight between this substance and the invader causes an allergic reaction redness, swelling, and the worst thing, itching. Barry can scratch himself for several hours or even days. It all depends on how his body will react to the bite. The mosquito fills up with Barry's blood and flies away. It does it not for pleasure, but because it needs to lay eggs. Protein in the blood is necessary for these insects to reproduce. Their eggs can't grow without this substance. Yeah, almost all biting mosquitoes are female. Male mosquitoes prefer plant and flower nectar. Hey, they're guys. So the female mosquito flies away from Barry. She sits down on the shore of the lake where a large mosquito base is located. Here, these insects lay eggs, drink water, and chill in the sun. There are several hundred thousand of them, and they're all hungry. The female mosquito brings with her the smell of Barry sweat, which is attractive to the rest of the mosquitoes, too. There are about 3,500 species of these insects on Earth. Some of them love the smell of sugar, perfume, or deodorant. And some enjoy the smell of dirty feet. Mm. Now, your attractiveness to mosquitoes also depends on what you have eaten today. Lots of candies and chocolate? Great! Now, mosquitoes feel a faint sweet smell coming from you. Have you eaten garlic and onions? Mosquitoes probably won't want to deal with you. And not only they, most likely. <laughs> so, the smell of berry sweat is perfect for all mosquitoes on the shore. They go mad, take off, and head for the poor guy. If you walk near the water when the evening comes, if you're sweaty, wearing black clothes, and have O-type blood, then you have all the chances to get bitten by mosquitoes. And berry meets all the criteria. 
The first mosquitoes land on Barry's feet. They bite him and start pumping blood. One tiny mosquito can draw a droplet of blood the size of a half a grain of rice. It's nothing at all. But several dozen of these bites? It's bad. Barry fights mosquitoes off with his hands, but the insects keep coming. They can't miss such a delicious dinner. 10, 20, 50, 100 mosquitoes. They cover Barry's legs. The skin swells and turns red. Barry feels a burning sensation. His immune system is working at 100%, trying to reduce the damage and drive the enemies away. But the more actively Barry's body defenses work, the worse he feels. Mosquitoes sit on his hands and on his wet t-shirt stuck to his body. Yes, their mouthpiece can pierce a thin layer of fabric. Barry tries to run away. He stumbles over a rock and falls. Some insects finish their feast and fly away to tell their friends about the free food. Mosquitoes from all over the lake come to try Barry. 200 mosquitoes are drinking his blood. 3, 5, 7, 900. Now, 1,000 mosquitoes have bitten him. Together, they have pumped out a small glass of blood. But the worst thing is, they continue biting him. Nothing can stop them now, even though they were supposed to bite him only a thousand times. Well, the only chance to escape is water. Barry, ignoring the itch, gets up and runs to the shore of the lake. Meanwhile, 100,000 mosquitoes have already bitten him. Sorry, Barry, but we have to entertain the audience. Don't worry, your recovery will be fast. He's getting closer and closer to the water. Mosquitoes are flying in front of his face, so he can't see the road. But Barry keeps running, waving his hands. Meanwhile, you know this moment when you're sleeping and one mosquito flies into the room through the window? Just one. But its squeaky sound is so annoying. And now, imagine a million mosquitoes making this noise. It's like a saxophone playing high notes. Sorry if you're a sax player. Well, Barry is slowing down. He's exhausted, and his heart is beating too fast. He no longer feels bites and itches. His body is becoming weak, but he's still moving toward the lake. Mosquitoes have already taken three soda cans of blood from him. And this is serious. Barry is running a fever and has clouded consciousness. His immune system is not coping. Barry can't run anymore. He's struggling to walk. It's getting harder to make every next step. The shore is only a few feet away, but it doesn't matter anymore since he has no energy to move. So he just sits on the grass and accepts the situation. He's lost a large soda bottle of blood, and this is a lot. This is probably the most large-scale attack of mosquitoes on humans. And then, at the very last moment, salvation appears. A frog croaks nearby, and another one. Several dozen jumping animals are approaching the shore. They release their tongues like spears and catch mosquitoes. This gives Barry hope. He makes a last-ditch effort to reach the lake. He jumps in. Yeah! What a relief! Cold, fresh water envelops his whole body and relieves the itching and irritation from the bites. He waits in the water while the frogs dine on the mosquitoes. The remaining insects fly away. Barry crawls out of the lake. He sees frogs catching mosquitoes and realizes that these annoying insects are necessary for our planet. Frogs live thanks to these tiny monsters. And besides frogs, there are many other animals that feed on mosquitoes. Lizards, spiders, bats, birds, turtles, it's a huge list. Mosquitoes are an endless source of food for them. One pair can lay 200 eggs. They grow fast and their lives are short. But if all these insects disappear, an ecological catastrophe may begin. Entire animal species may vanish from the face of the earth. The frogs that save Barry wouldn't exist. Without frogs, the population of other insects, like flies, would begin to grow. They would reproduce uncontrollably. And then, like falling dominoes, other problems will follow. So, Barry, don't be angry at mosquitoes. It's just nature. You better deal with your itchy problem. His whole body is red, covered with little bumps. He starts scratching himself, but this doesn't help. He only makes it worse. As long as mosquito saliva remains in his body and the immune system fights it, Barry will feel this itch. 
Fortunately, there are many oils and ointments to alleviate these effects. But the best way to get rid of the problem is to ignore it. Barry just needs to distract himself with something. Then the urge to scratch will disappear. Barry has survived so many mosquito bites without harmful consequences. But some people have problems dealing with just one. It depends on whether a person has allergies. Some have a small itchy bump, and others have severe inflammation. As for Barry, wasn't he swell? I mean, didn't he swell? (laughs) Okay, I'll stop. The best way to protect yourself is to use insect spray. Now, Barry sprays himself with this substance before every run and feels safe. But let's have a look at another situation. What if Barry gets attacked by huge dogs? Hey, just kidding. Relax, Barry. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.